So tonight, um, I, I think I do have exactly three stories. Um, and the, the first one um, is an image release um, and also actually a video release um, for Hubble's uh, 28th anniversary. So this came out just a couple weeks ago. And what they um, did was a, uh, a new image of the Lagoon Nebula. This is a star forming region about 4,000 light years away. It's actually towards, um, not quite towards the galactic center. It's, uh, I think, a little bit east of the galactic center. And um, what we're seeing, and I'll um, zoom into this, um, but we're, um, you, know, you, you can sort of um, get a sense of three-dimensional um, structure in um, this image. But um, there's clearly lots of um, gas and lots of, um, we have dark clouds. And it seems like um, it's being lit up from the inside, which it is. And what's going on here is in um, these uh, star forming regions where lots of stars are, are formed, literally probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of stars, are all being formed by a gigantic uh, molecular cloud. Um, when um, most of the stars that are um, formed are relatively low mass, like the mass of our sun, or even less massive. But um, occasionally, especially if you have a really big cloud, you'll get a massive um, star forming. And so there's a star in the center here, Herschel 36, which is over 30 times the mass of our sun. And the amount of light and energy that it puts out is over about 200,000 times the mass of um, the energy that our sun puts out. So this is a star that will eventually go supernova, although it probably won't do so for another 5 million years or so. But the, um, the energy, because it's so massive, um, instead of um, the energy peaking in visible wavelengths, which is the wavelengths that our eyes are sensitive to, and so our sun peaks um, somewhere in the yellow um, and, and close to the green, these massive stars actually peak closer to the ultraviolet. And so they pump out huge amounts of ultraviolet radiation. And so normally, this cloud would be obscuring um, all the um, low mass stars that are, um, or all the stars that are being formed. But when this massive star turns on, what happens is the stellar winds from the star and the ultraviolet photons, the UV radiation, start streaming out and they start eating the cloud away from the inside. And so the reason why this cloud looks really patchy and it looks um, kind of broken up um, is due in part to the winds and the radiation from the single massive star. Although um, the lower mass stars, they also uh, put out winds and jets as well, but they're not as powerful as this um, mass, um, single massive star. So um, we'll just zoom in a little bit closer. And here you can really see um, a lot of the details of um, their are individual stars that are nestled within this nebula. And you can think of the, um, the radiation from this um, massive star as basically carving out like a giant bubble. And so this bubble contains gas that's uh, about 10,000 degrees um, Celsius. And that um, gas is ionized, and um, the ionized gas um, radiates um, light as well. And so the Hubble Space Telescope basically had filters to look at um, light from um, different ionized um, species of, of gases. And, um, and then um, what we'll see in um, just a minute is um, an actual um, 3D um, fly-through of this nebula. But um, here is uh, an image um, showing, actually two images. So on the left, we have the visible light um, image um, that we saw before. And um, noted here are the three um, wavelengths and the um, types of atomic um, or ionized species that are actually emitting um, that light. And so we have oxygen three, hydrogen alpha, and nitrogen two. And even though um, what um, the astronomers have done is they've translated um, those different um, light in those three filters into blue, green, and red. And so when you composite them together, you get you know, this uh, beautiful color image. But in many ways, this is very artificial because um, this oxygen three, it has a wavelength of 502 nanometers, and that actually is in the green. So instead of blue, it actually would be greenish if you were able to see that light. And then 656 and 658 nanometers are both in the red. So we basically are seeing one green and two red um, emission lines 
from um, these ionized um, gases. But you know, if you were to see uh, to map this as red and this as red, you would see the same sort of detail that we do when we um, create um, this composite in this way. So this is kind of a lesson. Um, whenever you, you do see astronomical images um, online or um, in articles, oftentimes the colors that they use to translate the information that they're getting from the telescope doesn't um, normally or usually correspond to what your eyes would actually see. Now the image on the right is also taken from the Hubble Space Telescope, but this is taken at near-infrared wavelengths. So we're going into the infrared part of the spectrum, um, which is, um, are longer wavelengths, and so these wavelengths are on, are on the order about two to three times longer than the wavelengths that we can detect with our eyes. And so you're seeing the exact same region, uh, but what you notice is that in the infrared, the infrared light can actually pierce through the gas much better. So you can see sort of the same structure here and here, but everywhere else you can see that, the, that um, this giant cloud, which is forming all these stars, is much more transparent. And um, you can still see a hint of the cloud here since um, there's, um, you can see fewer stars in this direction, for instance, so there must be um, cloud gas that's blocking the um, background stars. But over here, we're kind of away from the bulk of the cloud because now we're seeing through that cloud and we're seeing lots and lots of stars um, in the background. Um, we're basically looking past the cloud and into um, the rest of the galaxy. Whereas in this region here, you can see that uh, the cloud still looks um, a very opaque in visible light. So, you know, I mean, here you can literally count the number of stars in maybe a few handfuls, whereas here we're looking at thousands and thousands of stars, uh, maybe tens of thousands of stars. All right, so here is the animation uh, that was created um, from the Space Telescope Science Center. And what, um, so what we'll do is we'll zoom in. The Galactic Center is actually right about there. And the Lagoon Nebula, as I said, is just a little bit away from the Galactic Center. And we're fading into different um, images taken from different telescopes until we fade into the Hubble Space Telescope. And then we finally fade into a computer animation that was based on the Hubble imagery. And so the computer animation, um, the, uh, the scientists and the artists who made this, um, they include Greg Bacon and Frank Summers at Space Telescope. What they do is they make guesses as to where the stars and the gas are in 3D space, because obviously we don't necessarily have information about what's exactly in the foreground or how far um, in the background objects are. But, um, now we're flying through and you can see all these um, scalloped edges and those are regions where the light, the UV radiation from that giant star is etching away the gas and it's lighting up um, the gas um, as well um, when that radiation ionizes the cloud. And here is a star um, when you see a little um, front, and that's probably due to um, winds from that star that are being impacted from the winds from the massive star. And so uh, you get these bow shocks. So this is a beautiful little animation. We don't know, you know whether what we're seeing is exactly what it would look like in um, 3D if we were to fly there, but it's pretty cool still. So.